Batman The Audio Adventures. Where am I? Where are you? Well, now, what kind of question is that, son? Father? You didn't fall asleep, did you, Bruce? Mother? Mother, it's... It's dark. Well, it is a movie theater, Bruce. Welcome to the Monarch Theater. Sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, no. Bruce, settle down now, dearest. It can't be. The cartoon short is starting, Bruce. Who knows what evil dwells in the heart of the dark of the city? One lone defender of the night. Look! In the shadows. On the rooftops. It's a specter. It's a shade. It's... Batmite! Yeah. Argus Studios Consolidated Cartoons presents Batlight in The Thomas and Martha Wayne Murders. Wait, what is this? What's happening? I saw the might night, Commissioner Gorgon. What can I do to crush the city's malefactors tonight? Ah, Batlight, finally. I need you to escort the Wayne family from the Monarch Theater through Crime Alley. And when I get back... I'd better not find them in a puddle of blood! Is that clear? You can count on me, Commissioner! No. What's wrong, Bruce? Something the matter, son? Yeah, something the matter, Brucey. What? Yoo-hoo! Up here on the screen, Mac! What's the matter? Don't you like the cartoon? This isn't happening. This didn't happen. Yeah, past the present have gone all screwy here in Bruce's Bean, haven't they? It's the Scarecrow's fear toxin, of course. But don't worry, just like I told the commish, I got everything on the... All right, you smugs, this is a stick-up. Yeah. I'll take that necklace you're wearing, lady. Save us, Batmite! Never fear, Batmite is here. I am vengeance, I am judgment, I am righteous justice. I am originally from upstate, but small town life doesn't really suit my style. So a few years back, I sold everything I owned, and I bought a van. And I said, if you don't do this now, you're gonna wake up one day full of regrets, Batmite. And... Uh, yeah oh See you around, Pally. Batmite! Yeah oh Whose bundle of blood is this? And don't you dare say the Waitses! It looks like you were right. It looks like your parents are daisy food. Again. This isn't happening. Focus. This is just convulsions in your subconscious. Oh, boo-hoo! So sue me. I'm just the vengeance of the night over here. If you're so sure, you could do a better job. Well, Thomas, that cartoon was dreadful. I've seen enough. I agree, Martha. Gather Bruce and let's leave discreetly. We'll use the exit onto the alley. You're about to get your chance to prove it! Gotham, an oil slick on the road to salvation. Join us now for another tale of life and death in Gotham City, March 8th. Bruce Wayne is lost in the mists of his mind and at the mercy of the Scarecrow. Meanwhile, the Penguin mounts an aggressive effort at damage control, his fearsome reputation eroded by imprudent ambition. Without Harvey Dent, he stands to lose his grip on the underworld. And without the Joker's head on a pike, he will lose his precariously situated influence over the police department. Oswald Cobblepot has badly miscalculated, and his only hope is that Catwoman can adjust <laughs> the final tally. Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane. Superintendent of Operations, Dr. Jeremiah Arkham, has a problem. Nurse? Has anyone seen the new nurse? He came into work today to find someone had changed the entry code to his office. This is irritating, but not unusual. The security keypads are known for their glitches. The unusual part is, when he entered his code incorrectly, huh? the basement of the asylum flooded. And every time he enters his code incorrectly, the water rises another 12 inches. That does it. Dr. Arkham knows well that a problem of this nature has one and only one possible source. Riddler. Question. Where did Noah find a leakum? Answer, in the bottom of his Arkham. <laughs> Not funny. Not funny. I'll tell you what's not funny. I booked the room in a sanatorium. This dump is clearly a sanitarium. Do you think I wouldn't notice? <laughs> uh, their 
are synonyms with different Latin roots. Why did I think you'd get that? You're a plebeian from a diploma mill. How is it that every time I take away your privileges, life gets harder for me? Well, in military terms, that's called getting your ass kicked on the battlefield, Jeremiah. Is it really that hard to understand? I'm kidding, I know that it is. What's it gonna take, huh? Tell me. Well, you'd have to go back to school and attend a real college this time, and then, um, Oh, you mean about me? You know, I thought I'd taken everything that I could from you. Well, you certainly tried. Indeed. Alone in a bare cell, Riddler is bound tightly in full restraints. Double straitjacketed, cuffed to a gurney, legs in irons, unable to even scratch his nose. It's a nigh unbearable suppression of basic personal freedoms that is known in the asylum as full Joker protocol. And still, you escalate the juvenile mischief. Now I realize I've taken everything except the only thing you care about. The true meaning of Christmas? Your precious intellect. Wait, what are you saying? I'm saying 300 cc's twice daily of a Hello Paradiseopam cocktail will have you struggling to finish the junior crossword puzzle. And me? Clocking out at a decent hour for once. You wouldn't dare. You're a doctor. Yes, but you know what I finally realized? My job is just to turn you into a respectable citizen. Nobody's paying me to deliver you. Undamaged. Riddler is momentarily without a ready response. Where is that nurse? I'm sorry, Doctor. Finally! Give me the syringe. I'm sorry it's come to this, Edward. Well, no, I'm not. I'll admit it, this is personal. And ever since I made this decision, I felt an indescribable lightness and serenity. Nurse, I said give me the sedative. If you say so, Doctor. What are you- <clears throat> Dr. Arkham manages to cling to just enough consciousness to realize- You're not- a nurse. Before crumpling to the floor in a heap. I'll be honest. I have no idea what I just shot him with or how long he'll be out. So let's make this quick, okay? I have a favor to ask. Well, well, well. What has ears like a cat and claws like a cat and rude tood like a cat but isn't a cat? Oh, shut up, Eddie. <laughs> well, this is unexpected. Do I have something worth stealing? The toilet is an antique, but I don't think it's valuable. I told you. I need a favor, and I don't have a lot of time. I came down here on a simple little errand to reallocate some resources. To steal something? Don't even call it theft. It offends my professional integrity. I just need access to Dr. Arkham's personal files, which should be like taking candy from a baby. Instead, I get here to find... What did you do to his security system anyway? Oh, it's a tangled mess for certain. But like most hopeless puzzles, it has an oh-so-elegant solution if one carefully considers the clues. <clears throat> riddle me this. I have no form, no face, or features. Nope. Not doing the riddle thing. Oh, come on. I'll figure it out myself. Thanks anyway. How is the lady in the caddy is not the fun one at the party? Are you going to tell me how to disarm your ridiculous booby trap or not? And what could you possibly have to offer me as an incentive? Well, riddle me this. Which side of a cat has the most fur? What? The outside. You look pretty uncomfortable in those restraints, Eddie. I have a car waiting. It'll take you anywhere you want to go. You must be getting tired of the padded cell motel. Pfft. I escape this dump all the time. What makes you think I need your help? I don't know, Eddie. It sounds like if you stay under Arkham's care, you're gonna need help with a whole lot. Starting with basic drool maintenance. And what's in Arkham's office that's so important anyway? Evidence bag. Listed contents. One switchblade. One deck of playing cards. Red suits only. One high-voltage joy buzzer. $69 in counterfeit $3 bills. Ugh, $69, what a hack. What's your interest in that professional lowest common denominator? Just the price on his head. Well, now you have my interest. Arkham's file boxes contain everything the Joker had on him when the Batman first brought him in. Bunch of trash, what could you possibly want to do with that? Nothing. I'm interested in the one item Dr. Arkham conveniently forgot to catalog. A personal journal. Get out. Filled to the margins with deeply personal secrets. Good God, you don't mean... If I'm going to hunt him down, I need to get into his head. To get into his head, I need the Joker's secret diary. The deepest, darkest secret thoughts of the Joker laid bare? Surely Pandora had less to fear from her box. Stay tuned as we lift the lid on a future tale of life and death in Gotham City. Happy Mardi 
Rock Gotham City? Yes, it's Fat Tuesday, and that means... The Gotham Gas Lamps return to town for this crucial series with Central City. Central City, earlier Lucky Bucky Sawfield, very restrained on the mound today. Lou, I almost want to say he looks spooked. Something has gotten into him for sure. We'll probably never know what. Anyway, today's game brought to you by Oswald Copplepot's fabulous Iceberg Lounge and Casino. If you know what's good for you, you'll play the Cobblepot way. The Iceberg Lounge, Oswald Cobblepot, doesn't ask twice. It would be Basil Carlo's last film and gain a notorious place in the annals of film history and the study of criminal insanity. The film was titled The Second Skin. Hey, uh oh, Brucey. You again. <laughs> Who else? You are just a construct of my mind, a fantasy made of psychedelic chemicals and surplus brain architecture. Oh, are we getting poisonal now? You are the contents of my mental wastebasket. Doubt, regret, pain. You are nothing but broken pieces of defeated enemies. Nothing? Hey, come on. Can nothing do this? Come along, Bruce. We're leaving the theater. We'll cut through the alley. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Movie night is over. And that means it's almost showtime. Father, no, don't do it. Yes, Thomas, let's go through the alley. Alfred's waiting with the car. Let's all go to the alley. Let's all go to the alley. Let's all go to the alley. To face a grisly fate. Not the alley, Mother. Not again. Yes, Bruce, again. But this time, you can save them. Unless the fear consumes you again. The wolf is at the gate. He's hunting your the bait. Let's all go to Crime Alley to face a grisly fate. So this is it, Crime Alley. Gee, I wonder why they call All it. All right, nobody move. This is a stick-up. Okay, thank you. I got no further questions. I'll take that necklace you're wearing, lady. Leave her alone, you... Quick, Bruce! This is the chance you've been waiting for. Use your bat, my junior crime-fighting kid. Yes, I have to... What is this? What's the matter? When it really counts, all your precious toys are just use this junk? <laughs> your boy, run! You gotta hide! That mugger is looking to finish the job. Don't you feel the fear? Yes. I have... I have to run. I have to... <laughs> no, you gotta do better than that. You have to hide! He'll be after you. Your... entire... life. Unless you do something. Psst. Maybe in here. What is this place? It's a cave, I think. Perfect place to hide. Yes, I can hide in the cave. Come on, my boy. Where are you hiding? But if he finds you, what then? That guy is a wave killing machine. Boy, howdy. To really feel safe, you'll need a disguise. Here, take this. A cape? This is a cape? Exactly. Nice fit, but I still see Bruce under there. You better take this mask, too. There we go. Perfect. Nobody would ever guess you're a Wayne. You got the cape, you got the mask. Congratulations. You look ridiculous. Ridiculous? Completely absurd. Look at you. I shall become a bat. <laughs> what a schnook. You're the heir to the Wayne legacy. What would your father think? My father would be proud of me. Of my mission for Gotham City. My father was a fighter. <laughs> Your father was a doctor, Brucey. He lived by do no harm. Not exactly your M.O., huh, Mr. Vengeance of the Night? <laughs> you crippled way more people than he'd ever say. No, I... And what would your dear old mama think of this dark thing you made yourself into? She'd blame herself, of course. What a dope she was. She thought she taught you kindness. No. Boy, I thought you were afraid of the mugger, but we found what you were really afraid of, didn't we, Brucey? You're afraid you disappointed them. You're afraid you've dishonored them. And you're right, Brucey. 
It's kind of funny when you think about it. Ever since that night in the alley, you've been trying to do right by old mom and dad. To be the justice they never got. But get this. Your entire life's work, all it's done, is turn you into something your parents could never love. No. No. <laughs> no. Gotham, where foul play always scores the run. Join us now for another tale of life and death in Gotham City. Folks, tell them heads up over in Gotham Heights, because that one is out of here. Sold out Gotham Stadium on a bitter, cold March evening. Perfect Gotham City baseball weather. Tonight, a homecoming for two-time Winter League champs, the Gotham Gas Lamps, as they face the down-and-dirty demons of Central City. Star Slugger Swat Flyshacker has hit his first homer of the night. Unbelievable! And one more homer, we'll break the league record. The crowd goes wild, and the penguin crows knowingly to the various nefarious gathered in his luxurious box seats. See? What did I tell you, Frenchie? Swat Flyshacker is hot tonight. Yeah, funny, because it sure looks like it's the pitcher who sweats. Starfield pausing again to mop sweat from his brow. Very sweaty for a cold night, isn't he, Luke? Who, old Lucky Bucky Starfield? Indeed. Must have a lot on his mind. Wonder what it could concern. I told you the fix was in. Hot dog. Over here, boy. Who needs sustenance? So I'm positively depleted. Maxie, would you want a weenie, old boy? That's one, Homer Oswald. You promised us two. I got long green at stake, enough but your say-so. Oh, patience. Tonight's your lucky night, boys. The dice of Zeus always fall luckily. But still, betting on double taters is very risky, Oswald. Oh, stop fidgeting, Maxie, and eat your hot dog like a good little god. Trust me, there's plenty of game left. The fix is in. But despite his ample assurances, it's now the bottom of the ninth, and Swat has yet to hit that second dinger. Yeah. Strike three, and Hobart is out of there. Lucky Bucky is on fire, and I think the crowd has soured a little, Stiff. That they have, and roll! Here comes the Central City mascot, Speedy the Demon Dog, to rub it in. Speedy the Demon Dog feeling pretty chesty in the absence of Lampy the Gas Lamps mascot. Lampy would never have tolerated this kind of disrespect from a visiting mascot. May he rest in power. Yes, the demons have taken the swagger out of the hometown team. And the confines of the Penguin's private box is no sanctuary from the pessimism of the crowd. Last chance for that Homer approaches, Citizen Cobblepot. Drama, gentlemen! Drama! We have to make it look good, don't we? And what a great finish this will be for the fans. One for the ages, you'll see. We better see, Oswald. It would go a long way to restoring my faith in your, let's call it, prominence. What's that supposed to mean? Peanuts! Get your bag of peanuts! It means you are stretched thin, and everyone knows it. Is that a fact? Too much on your plate, they say. Taking over the police, the merger with Dent. Where is Dent anyway, Oswald? Cracker Jack! I got your crunchy Cracker Jacks with the toy inside! My, my. Seems Speedy the Demon Dog isn't the only one feeling chesty tonight. Hey, Frenchy old smoke. I think your tail feathers are dragging, Ozzy, and you're lucky the bat is busy with the scarecrow. You gonna try to tell me I'm wrong? I'm going to try to forget you said that, Frenchy. I pick the winners and losers in this town. The fools that forget that, those aren't the winners, old bean. And next up on deck for the gas lamps, Swat Flyshacker! Fireworks! Get your free fireworks! Did she say free fireworks? That's right. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody. Free fireworks for everyone. Get your firecrackers, get your Roman candles. What the devil is this? It's Harley Quinn and her crew. Decked out in full Mardi Gras regalia and distributing pyrotechnics to the rowdy crowd by the fistful. I say, clown woman, what the devil do you think you're doing? Hey there, tuxedo 
bandito. What's it look like I'm doing, Mac? It's Mardi Gras, and I'm here to bring the bang. You can't give the crowd explosives. There's a game going on. Oh, do not worry about that, Pally. I told everyone wicked seriously to no matter what, wait till the game was totally over before setting off and... oh, oh. <laughs> like that. Always one wise guy, right? And Fleischacker steps in. Folks, this could be for the game and the league record. The famously distractible SWAT Fleischacker can't let the moment get to him. Ah, oh, come on, you guys. What did I say? What, what, what did you think was going to happen? As Penguin burbles with agitation, SWAT Fleischacker steps out to the plate, swinging the famous Sluggerella. And Harley's eyes light up like a slot machine. That's that bat with the magic Feeling. Swat steps up to the plate. Folks, so much is riding on this moment. This is Harley's thought precisely. Mine. Now. Sawfield winds up. And the pitch. What a meatball. Slow it over the plate. Fleischacker digs in and... Steer one. Ah, no! Focus, you idiot! But the louder it gets in the stadium, the quieter it gets in Harley's head. This is it. Now begins the Harlequinade. Folks, it's mayhem. Hard to see through the smoke. The Central City pitcher seems afraid to come off the map. And SWAT Fleischacker seems dazed. What's going on down there? Well, well, I think he just got hit in the head by a female clown. That is what's happening, Stiv. A female clown is going absolutely gas house gorilla on the slugger with his own bat. Well, I think we can call the hitting streak at 59 games, Stiv. SWAT is not going to play the next game. The bulk of the crowd is now on the field detonating explosives and at least one hot dog cart is on fire, Lou. Okay, there's definitely a propane tank on board there, Steve. Gonna need to monitor that closely. But first, oh boy, the clown has thoroughly tenderized Spot Fleischacker and has now turned her fury on Speedy the Demon Dog. The Central City mascot <laughs> desperate to find a place to hide from a bat swinging man. For God's sake, she's gaining on you. Run, Speedy. Oh, but not behind the burning hot dog. The dog is gone. In his place, a gentle rain of sausages. <laughs> Thus concludes the Harlequinade, an irreverent intermission amidst life and death in Gotham City. Where are we now? Practically nowhere. We're so deep inside your mind now, Bruce. It's miles in every direction. And I thought your house was ridiculously big and empty. Hello! Was that a tumbleweed? Oh, <laughs> classic. You know in the cowboy movies when the good guy is just a little bitty speck on a horse in the middle of a huge desert? And his canteen is empty? And then he loses his horse? You just lost your horse, Kimazabi. Why is it so empty? Well, this is where normal people keep happy memories, Bruce. You know, loving and laughing and learning a little something along the way. The stuff that makes us human, so, uh, you do the math. You lie. It's easy math, Bruce. It's a lot of zero. That's not true. Alfred, Robin, Jim Gordon, Harvey Dent, these are not zeros. No, okay, Harvey's a point five. Come on, Brucey, don't kid yourself. I'll add it up for you. Bruce Wayne died in the alley with his parents. What lived on is a bitter and sadistic bag of barely adequate coping mechanisms. Mm. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Look, I'm sure this all made sense when you were 10 years old. You know, the Batmobile and the Bat computer. The whole plan must have seemed like a totally reasonable way to deal with grief. But now. You're nothing but a broken man who has tailored his fear into a mask to hide behind. What a sad spectacle. And girlfriend, I am here for it. <laughs> Wait. That laughter. That glee. Who are you really? Huh? I'm the Batmite, Chief. Don't you read the Gazette? Don't you own the Gazette? You're not a newspaper cartoon. You don't want me to know who you really are. What are you even talking about? Brucey, you're on drugs. Like, literally, you're on drugs. You mock my mask, but you wear one too. What are you hiding? <laughs> oh, Brucey. 
Sigh. What a letdown. I thought for sure you would have guessed by now. No idea who's behind the mask? No idea who's taken up permanent residency in your head? No clue about the fear that motivates everything you do? Take off the mask. Aw, don't you want to guess? I am ridicule and delirium. <laughs> I'm malicious humor. I am depraved indifference to reason. Ring any bell? Take off the mask. Oh, come on, Bruce. You should know this one. I'm all you can ever think about. 24-7. <laughs> you. No, you. Don't you get it? <laughs> I'm you, Bruce. Except I know I'm insane. <laughs> That's why you wear the mask, Bruce. Because you can't bear to look at your own face in the mirror. Nothing scares you more. Because if you ever scrounged up the courage to look at your own true reflection, you know, <laughs> you would see the Joker staring back at you. Two of a kind, two in a million. Twice can be nice or double the trouble. Ain't we a bear? No. No sale. Huh? You're wrong. The mask isn't my fear. It's yours. It's theirs. Any who prey on the weak, if I have to sacrifice my humanity to safeguard that of the innocent people of Gotham, this does not scare me. But yes, I feel fear. To live is to feel fear. The will to live is just fear of death. Hey now, Brucey, let's keep it frosty. Yes, fear is my constant companion. I felt the power of my fear that night in the alley. I felt it clench like a fist in my chest. A fist of fear. I'm sensing I pushed you too hard. Let's... But then I learned to strike with it. Now that fist cracks bones and loosens teeth. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> you can beat me. But you're just causing yourself pain. And don't you know? That's how I win. My pain is your pain. My fear is your fear. <laughs> Call home. Alfred, can you hear- Master Bruce! Alfred, good. My implant is still transmitting. I don't know how long I've been out. I'm in a hospital bed, somewhere, unguarded, but- Sir, you must come back at once. It's Two-Face. Not a unit! Come up for us, Sir! Alfred. A chaotic scene at Gaslamp Stadium and the probable end of the Gaslamp season. <laughs> this package arrived for you, sir. <laughs> it is from Mr. Frenchy Blake and Mr. Maxi Zeus, sir. Security opened downstairs. And I'm to open it now? It was delivered with urgency, sir. Hmm. Do you know what this is, Mr. De Condor? It is difficult to identify with confidence, sir. Indeed it is. Especially when it's in this many bloody pieces. It is a penguin, Mr. De Condor. A dead... Penguin. I have already prepared the downstairs meat locker to receive guests, sir. Who shall I bring to you first? Mr. Zeus or Mr. Blake? No, Mr. De Condor. We're beyond that now. This isn't an insult that's answered with a few broken thumbs. This is mutiny. They think they perceive weakness. I'll give them a show of force. I don't want their spirits broken. I want their spirits burned alive in a ceramics kiln. I want their defiance reduced to greasy ashes. I want the flames of hell imported directly from the source. Do you mean... Yes, Mr. De Condor. 
extend an invitation to the Santa Priskin Cartel. Tell them I'm prepared to negotiate their expansion into Gotham City in exchange for a little help. Re-establishing the rightful order in the underworld. <laughs> Life and death in Gotham City. Epilogue. Alfred? Harvey? Robin, come in. Do you copy? The house is empty. Where are Alfred and Harvey? Where is Robin? And where is the Scarecrow? And now it's time for the Midnight Movie Matinee with your host, The Creeper. Tonight's feature, Dread Castle. Starring Julie Madison and... Not tonight, Gotham City. Tonight, the Scarecrow is running the spook house. And tonight's movie is very, very special. Gather up the kiddies. This is cinema history. Oh, no. For the first time ever. I present The Second Skin, starring the great Basil Carlo. I guarantee when you feast your eyes on this, you're going to want to feast on your eyes. <laughs> Life and Death in Gotham City, to be continued in part two. Batman, the audio adventures, written and directed by Dennis McNicholas. Batman, created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger, based on characters from DC, with performances by Jeffrey Wright, Aristotle Atari, Ike Barinholtz, Rosario Dawson, Steve Higgins, Toby Huss, Gillian Jacobs, John Leguizamo, Dennis McNicholas, Tim Meadows, Seth Myers, Bobby Moynihan, Chris Parnell, Katie Rich, Ben Rogers, Paul Shear. Pete Schultz, Brooke Shields, Brent Spiner, Keenan Thompson, Alan Tudyk, Bradley Whitford, Melissa Villasenor, Eli Bruglin, Doug Bossy, Ronjani Brow, Chris Gibney, Julie Larson, Erica Phillips, Rosie Phillips, Tony Phillips, Zoe Phillips, Deirdre Quinn, Robbie Wyckoff, Executive Producers, John Berg, Angela Petrella, Produced by Dennis McNicholas. Executives in charge of production. Shalene Desai. Peter Girardi. Producer, Tyler Dorson. Production services by Cast Media. Producer, Colin Thompson. Coordinating producer, DJ Lubell. Music by Doug Bossy. Sound recording, design, and mixing by Big Yellow Duck. Sound design, mixing, dialogue editing, and re-recording mixing by Chris Gibney. Dialogue editing and additional post-production by Julie Larson. Original songs by Doug Bossy and Tony Phillips. The characters and events depicted in this podcast are fictional. Any similarity to any actual person, living or dead, or to any actual events, firms, places, and institutions or other entities is coincidental and unintentional. This podcast is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries, and its unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability and criminal prosecution. Country of First Publication, United States of America. Batman, The Audio Adventures. Copyright 2022, Warner Brothers Entertainment Incorporated. Batman and all related characters and elements are trademark and copyright DC. All rights reserved.